Central South Division. It is my pleasure to call this contest to order and introduce to you our division governor, Oscar Langford. Good evening, Toastmasters, friends, and guests. Welcome. Welcome to the contest. Let me ask you out there, raise your hand if this is your first Toastmasters contest. So you're going to have a, lot of, a lot of fun today. In each of the eight divisions that make up our district, District 30 here in Metro Chicago, each division stands out as unique. They offer something. And here in the Central South, we're actually the largest district, I mean, excuse me, the largest division in District 30. So I can see by this crowd out here, the, di the division showed up. So thank you. <laughs> I want to thank our contestants for participating today. Without the contestants, you wouldn't have a contest. As a matter of fact, the word contest is in the word contestant. So you got to have the contestants to be have the contest. I'd like to bring up for words of inspiration Ms. Chris Schultz. Chris, come on up here. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters. I've selected a short story from a gentleman named Adam Kahn, and it's titled The Drift. In 1982, Stephen Callahan was crossing the Atlantic alone in his sailboat when he struck something and sank. He was out of the shipping lanes and floating in the life raft alone. His supplies were few, his chances were small. Yet, when three fishermen found him 76 days later, he was alive. Much skinnier, but he was alive. There were two keys to his survival. He chalked up his survival to his ingenuity, how he was able to catch fish and eat, and also distill seawater into fresh water and stay relatively hydrated. The second was his attitude. What struck me was how he managed to keep himself going. When all hope seemed lost, when there seemed no point in continuing, it, when he was suffering greatly, and when his breath was punctured, and after more than a week of struggling with his weak body to continually fix it and pump air into it while it continued to leak, he was starved, he was desperately dehydrated, and he was thoroughly exhausted. But giving up would have seemed the only sane option, but he didn't. So how did he make it through? I tell myself I can handle it, wrote Callahan in a narrative. Compared to what other things I have been through, I'm fortunate. I tell myself these things over and over and over building up my fortitude. I can handle it. I wrote that down after reading it. It struck me as something important. And I have told myself this same thing when my own goals seemed out of reach or far off. When problems seemed too overwhelming. Every time I've said it, I've always come back to my senses. I can handle it. So here, coming to us from the extreme edge of survival, are the words that can give us strength. Whatever you're going through, tell yourself you can handle it. Compared to what others have been through, you're fortunate. Tell this to yourself over and over and over. It will help get you through the rough spots with a little bit more fortitude. You can handle it. Agenda. I'm going to have kickball around some dignitaries, and I'm going to bring them up here in just a second. 
one other correction, Jeanette said she was the contest master. She's actually the contest chair. So I just wanted to clarify that. And let's bring to the stage our contest master. He's our current retention chair for District 30. Please help me welcome Mr. Iqbal Pacha. City. If this event could be any more spectacular, they'd slap a sign on this and call it top secret. But tonight, <laughs> the Central South is calling this the 2014 Humorous Speech and Evaluation Speech Contest. <laughs> My name is Iqbal Acha, and I will be your Toastmaster for the evening. And before I go any farther, I'd like for each and every single one of you to turn to your neighbor, smile, <laughs> and show them your most prized possession. I'm not talking about Our B-14 
B15 area governor, Ms. Lorraine Moment. Our B16 area governor, Mr. Matthew Fox. We also have our C21 area governor, Ms. Latrice Ford. Our C22 area governor, Sheila Arnold. Our C26 area governor, Deborah Smart. Our South S55 area governor, D. Marie Smith. capable of fallacy and I am capable of mistakes. Have I missed any dignitaries that have not yet been announced? Yes. Please stand and be recognized. You are? Lily Simmons, B-17 Area Governor. Thank you. As many of you know, there are going to be two contests tonight. The Humorous Speech Contest and the Speech Evaluation Contest. Our first contest will be the Speech Evaluation Contest. When that contest has concluded, we will have a 10-minute break for an intermission. And after that break, we will then resume and begin the Humorous Speech Contest. Now, as every contest, as many of you are familiar with, there's always a disclaimer. And I have learned to master that, you know, the TV announcer's voice when I do these disclaimers. So if you have been awake at 2 o'clock in the morning and haven't been unable to sleep, you may recognize this voice starting now. <coughs> Contestants, timers, ballot counters, and sergeant at arms have all been briefed prior to the beginning of this contest. Everyone is aware of the Toastmaster International rules that govern this contest. No one should enter or leave the room during the contestants' presentations. You may do so if time permits during the minute of silence between presentations. Thank you. And with that 2 a.m. QVC announcer's voice, let the contest begin. <laughs> I, would like, I would now like to give the speaking order for the speech evaluation contest at this time. Contestant number one, Stephen Lindsay. Stephen Lindsay, contestant number one. Contestant number two, B. Westrick. B. Westrick, contestant number two. Contestant number three, Matt McLaughlin. Matt McLaughlin, contestant number three. Contestant number four, Kate Reinerson. Kate Reinerson, contestant number four. Contestant number five, Christopher Curry. Christopher Curry, contestant number five. And contestant number six, Dorsey Smith. Dorsey Smith, contestant number six. At the appropriate time, I will signal to our sergeant at arms to please escort these six contestants out of the room so that they may prepare for their remarks. But before they can even go there, our evaluation contestants have to have somebody to evaluate, right? Right. Exactly. And we have someone who stepped up to the plate. We have someone for the job. I'd like to announce and introduce, and I'm going to ask you to all please help me welcome to the lectern, Mr. Jeff Bockler, and the title of his speech, Experience the Hunt. Experience the Hunt, Jeff 
Butler. yesterday. There I was, standing alone in the dark north woods of Wisconsin. My heart was pounding, and I could see my breath on that cold November morning. Thirty minutes earlier, my uncle led me deep into the woods. I stumbled along, just trying to keep up with him, carrying with me a large, heavy gun, far too big for someone my age. He stood me next to a tree, said, don't move, and away he went. There I sat, shivering in the dark, all alone. It was the opening day of the Wisconsin deer hunting season. It was the first time I'd ever hunted. I was standing on the edge of a hill with thick woods to my left. To my right, the woods ran down the long hill and led to a valley below. Before he left, my uncle pointed out a deer trail that was only 30 yards from the tree under which I stood. He said that the deer would be traveling along that trail as they headed for the valley below. So there I sat, straining my eyes in almost complete darkness, concentrating on that trail. Bam! There it was again. Who was shooting and what were they shooting at? I could barely see the trail in front of me as the sun struggled to rise above the forest. And that's when I heard a sound behind me. It was the sound of deer walking quietly on the frozen oak. Being a novice hunter I was, I quickly turned to the noise and found five deer staring at me. <laughs> Startled by my movement, the deer sprung away and down the hill they went. I quickly took chase, running as fast as I could to where I had last seen the deer. I peered down the hill, but all I could catch was a fleeting glimpse of their white tails below. They were long gone. Suddenly I heard that sound again. But this time, the sound was coming from the trail. Yes, the trail. The trail on which my uncle told me not to move from. But now, I was over 70 yards away from the trail, not 30. The sound was getting louder. And that's when I saw it. Every hunter's dream. A deer that most hunters will never see in a lifetime of hunting. But there I was, less than one hour into my first hunt. And before me was a majestic, 10-point buck. His antlers spread wide past his ears and rose tall above his head. I couldn't believe my eyes as this huge buck walked slowly along the trail, seemingly unaware of a 13-year-old boy trembling with excitement only yards away. The buck stopped on the trail. His ears twitched as he listened for any unfamiliar noises. His nose held high in the air to pick up any unwanted sense. This was it. This was the opportunity I was waiting for. I struggled as I raised the heavy gun to my shoulder. I took aim and I pulled the trigger. Bang! I missed. <laughs> <laughs> Off runs the deer, my bullet smashing into the tree behind it. And while I was dejected at the time, I learned a very important lesson on that trip. A lesson that I carry with me to this very day. And what I learned is that for me, a successful hunt is not about harvesting an animal. A successful hunt is about embracing the experience of the hunt. It is about the experience of the hunt. On that particular trip, I was able to spend time with my grandpa and grandma, both of whom have passed. I was able to reunite with my cousins, who I rarely saw at the time. Today, they're like brothers to me. And I was able to spend quality time with my dad. And even though I missed the buck of a lifetime, and by the way, I haven't seen one like that since, <laughs> but even though I missed the buck of a lifetime, that trip forever remains one of those very special memories from my youth. Well, the years after that trip went by fast, and while outdoors and hunting remained a passion, it was athletics, academics, and friends that took up the majority of my time. High school graduation came quickly. I was off to college, and soon I was living downtown Chicago and started my career. 
Before I knew it, I was married. I had two beautiful children, my son who is now 14 and my daughter who is now 11. Unbelievable. We migrated out to the suburbs and I was now making that dreaded two and a half hour round trip commute to work. <laughs> <laughs> Home late, kids activities off to bed and up before dawn is the daily ritual. And while life is fun, it sure moves fast. And the one thing, I can, one thing I've learned is that the stressful, fast-paced life can really change who we are. It can test our core values, and it can alter our sense of what is important in our lives, if we allow it to. And I wasn't about to let that happen. And that's when I reconnected with nature, to rediscover, to remember that lesson I learned those many years ago, to embrace the experience of the hunt. And as maturity tends to do, it brought a new perspective on what experience the hunt meant to me. And for me, it was my opportunity to slow down this stressful, fast-paced life for just a short period of time and to enjoy and appreciate nature and everything it has to offer. And I certainly have. I have hunted elk in shimmering mountains, shimmering aspen mountains of Colorado. I have hunted javelina in the desert mountains of Arizona. And I've stalked mule deer and antelope with a bow and arrow in the sand hills of western Nebraska. I have fly fished on beautiful mountain streams in Colorado, deep sea fished off the coast of Mexico, and I've caught 50 inch muskie in some of the most pristine waters you'll ever see in Canada. I've taken my son turkey hunting in Wisconsin, and I've seen the excitement in his eyes, knowing that he'll always remember that time. I've had the opportunity to teach him how to appreciate nature as I do, to have respect for the animals that we hunt, and to take it all in as a lasting memory. Each one of these experiences is a special memory in my life, spending time with family and friends and enjoying nature to its fullest. The outdoors is my passion. For me, it's cathartic. It gives me an opportunity, opportunity to slow down this fast-paced life, to re-examine what is important in my life and to appreciate it even more. It is my opportunity to rediscover that 13-year-old boy all over again. Mr. Postman. our speech evaluation contestants five minutes to complete their evaluations. Mr. and Ms. Sergeant at Arms, please escort the six speech evaluation contestants out of the room and timers, when I ask you to, please give me five minutes on the clock. Jeff, how long have you been with Testmasters? 
three months. This is my, this is my per very first speech, and thanks to Rachel. <laughs> Wisconsin. They hunt and fish and hunt and fish. I grew up on the east side, so I rarely had a chance to spend time with them. So this was a really special time. The, the trip I was talking about was a special time for me to visit them and enjoy their company and get to meet sometimes the folks I didn't spend much time with. Very good. Well, Jeff, there's a few things on your profile that I thought were interesting, but I'd like for you to share with us a little bit about the two things that you are most proud of. I apologize for that. The Wells Fargo Golden Spoke winner for top sales and the Wells Fargo Extraordinary Leadership Award. Tell me about the Leadership Award. How were you selected or nominated for this position for the award? It was an award that is given annually in our Global Financial Institutions Group. I work for Wells Fargo. Global Financial, I work in the Global Financial Institutions Group. I can tell you about that if you want. But our senior management, provide this or give this award out to two individuals a year, and it's chosen by the members of the team. So I manage a, a group of folks, and they nominated me, and I was elected and won that award. Fantastic. Yeah, that was, yeah. What I liked about it was it was something that was uh, given to me by my team. So. Nothing says... Nothing says We're not Wells Fargo, but we are proud of you. So I want to share with you two things. Number one, a certificate of participation, but yeah. also an ice breaking award. Right. Right. Just, just letting everybody know that these proceedings are being videotaped and they will be posted to the web after the last division contest is aired. I will make a private link available via YouTube to your division governor who you can, as a contestant, email so that you may review yourself after the contest. These contests will be available at my website, www.timsvideo.com, where you can see archives of the last four years of the vision contests and above. Thank you. Thank you, timers. We are now ready to hear from our evaluation contestants. Okay, that's my cue that the charging arms are going to bring one of them in. <laughs> Waiting to see that one for the right time.
suspense is killing me as much as it is killing you. <laughs> speech evaluation contest. I am going to ask for one minute of silence before the first contestant speaks and one minute of silence between each contestant. Timers, please give me one minute. Speech evaluation contestant number one, Stephen Lindsay. Stephen Lindsay, speech evaluation contestant number one. Mr. Contest Master, Contest Chair, honored dignitaries, fellow Toastmasters and guests. The speech that we heard tonight is one we can all relate to. It's one of those early childhood experiences which form the way that we live throughout the rest of our lives. This experience, the one that Jeff shared with us tonight, he details how he feels that through the rest of his life as he goes on to subsequent hunts and how it shapes the way that he interacts with his children. Such experiences connect with us as an audience at a level that is so deep. As Jeff was delivering his speech, he used incredible words of onomatopoeia, like bang! callbacks of that ch 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 every single time he used that technique I was pulled in I was brought into his realm as a speaker and I was with him in the woods as the deer were walking around him additionally on that cold morning in the woods as he described his situation as a young boy, around me I saw the woods. I saw the deer path in front of me. His descriptive verbiage was very clear to understand, and it brought me into the world that he was recalling. Now, Jeff's message, his delivery, was very good, but there are things that would elevate his speech. I would have loved to hear a greater amount of emotion. The surprise that he heard when a deer was right behind him. And the way that it affected his life down the line and how he cared for his, his son who was on his hunt and how it seeped in to the experiences that he had later recalling that first hunt. Those would have brought this to a different level. 
And in doing so, he could have employed greater use of vocal variety, talking about how as he heard those deer go past and reacted quickly, that he ran really quickly right after them, even 70 yards, no matter what it took to get after those deer, but they were gone. These things would have improved his speech and I think would have helped connect even more greatly with his audience. I, I would be excited to hear his next speech and to hear feedback go in to a future delivery. Mr. Contest Master. Please have one minute for the judges to complete their ballots. Evaluation contestant number two, B. Westrate. B. Westrate, speech evaluation contestant number two. Thank you. Dignitaries, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests. Especially Jeffrey, thank you for being our target speaker. It's much appreciated. One thing I really liked is how you open your speech. Boom! Like, whoa, that really got my attention. What is this? Then you vividly described your experiences in the first hunt at the age of 13. It's often a rather difficult, challenging age. And then to go on this brand new experience out in the wilderness that he probably had never really experienced before. And my grandfather owned a cottage in Wisconsin on the Wisconsin chain of lakes right out in the middle of dairy country. But it's not the wilderness. Not at all. And I never saw deer there. I didn't really see any deer until North Park Village which is on Chicago's northwest side. <laughs> <laughs> the wilds of Chicago. <laughs> but you actually got to see this huge, beautiful animal in the wilderness, and I know you didn't expect it. You had many pauses that you used very effectively. Great eye contact. A lot of gestures, including some that described hills. It showed us what you meant and helped a lot. You also gave many booms, and ones that you heard, you would most likely gunfire. And the sound of the deer, it was, it was, they were walking. It's very effective. Your description of your experience was very clear and vivid. And you gave us a vivid description of that buck, a 10 point buck. Huge, gorgeous, thrilling to look at, right there. I can't imagine being able to see it at all, much less at 13. But I like the phrase of experience, embrace the experience of the hunt. And it can mean many different things. It can mean your experience, which you described for us here, and you showed us something of what it meant to you then. You also described your life in the, the wilds of suburbia. I grew up in Elmhurst, so I'm familiar with some of them. And my father used to live in Montgomery, so I'm familiar with some of the, the differences and what it means. And that life can challenge who we are and our values 
and our core realities. And that's very true of everybody here. And that resonated with me a lot. You also described some of the ways that you currently reconnect with that original experience and many of the outdoor activities that you engage in now. I would like to have heard a little more about how you embrace the experience of the hunt in your everyday life. Because that's something that I think would be challenging for all of us. Thank you. Please give me one minute on the clock so that our judges can complete the balance. Speech Evaluation Contestant number three, Matt McLaughlin. Matt McLaughlin, Speech Evaluation Contestant number three. Mr. Toastmaster, assemble dignitaries, this room full of fellow Toastmasters and visitors, on this Wednesday night, and especially Jeff. Good evening to all. Jeff really enjoyed your speech tonight in a number of different ways. I think you did a number of things really well. I think all of us feel that way. A couple of things that I look for right off the top when I'm listening to a speech, relatability and passion for the topic. And backtracking to the second point that I mentioned, Clearly, I think everybody knows that Jeff is very passionate about the outdoors. It came across from the opening moments and it continued to come across throughout his speech. In terms of relatability, no, not everybody is a hunter, not everybody is an outdoorsman, but everybody, I think, can relate to something that was in your speech tonight, whether it's family, whether it's life's journey, and you did a really nice job, Jeff, of weaving all of those things together. The open, I really liked the way you opened it up. The imagery. I've spent time in Wisconsin, and I've never been out with them, but my cousins, who I'm close to from suburban Milwaukee, they actually do some deer hunting, and I've heard them talk about it. And spending time in Wisconsin myself, I could picture the frozen leaves. I just went camping this past weekend with my daughter. No hunting and no frost, but I could picture that feeling of being out there, being somewhat isolated. And then, of course, the fear of disobeying your relative, your uncle, and then going through that process. So you really did a good job of taking us there, taking us around the wilderness. Then you did a really strong move in terms of shifting gears. You took us to the present day, to family life, and what that has been about, and how you've struggled to find time. It's not easy to take a couple of different turns in a speech of that length, but then, Jeff, you did it again because you took us to what you do now, as an adult hunting, and you took us to all of these different scenarios, places very different from Wisconsin. I think you have to go to Arizona to find Havelina, New Mexico, then fly fishing, then all of these other things. And I really, really enjoyed it. I really felt my own journey through life, my relatives in Wisconsin, how life goes so fast, spending time with my own kids, you, you wove all of that together. A couple of things to think about going forward. Jeff, when you come up here tonight, let the applause die down. You started talking as Iqbal was making his introduction. Let the applause die out completely. When you saw that buck 
set that up just a little more powerfully. It was good, but I wanted that bam. You, you gave a bam, you gave a sound effect, but that's a really key pivotal moment in this speech. Not everybody, in fact, I'm confident that probably no one else in this room has ever been between the table in terms of the distance to the buck. So set that up a little better and a little more drama in the I miss. Jeff, really enjoyed your speech. Really looking forward to hearing another one from you. Mr. President. Speech Evaluation Contestant number four, Kate Reinerson. Kate Reinerson, Speech Evaluation Contestant number four. And it wasn't quite as masterful as the beginning. 
Another area I would recommend improving upon is having fewer examples of experiences that you've had since that first hunting experience. I found that there were perhaps one too many and I was getting lost in the shuffle of hearing all of them one after another. In conclusion, great descriptive language, great descriptive sounds, great descriptive gestures. Did an excellent job of making me feel nostalgic, <coughs> but work on the pitch and work on the spacing. I cannot wait for the next 29 years of my life. <laughs>
from your beginning of your um, speech and your storytelling to the body and the conclusion was all wrapped up well. From the alliteration, hand movement, eye contact, he engaged everyone. So, Jeff, after this, this contest, I'm going to come down and ask you where you go to, where your club is, because I want to find out how it's all done, because the way you uh, present and storytell is how everyone should give a contest. Speech evaluation contestant number six, Dorsey Smith. Dorsey Smith, speech evaluation contestant number six. It was wonderful. I really felt 
the shivering cold. I felt the anticipation. And I loved the message. The message was something that could have been related to everyone. Life is not about winning all the time. Something I needed to hear today. <laughs> it's about <laughs> how well you play the game. What did you experience in your journey? That was wonderful. And I thank you very much for it, Mr. Toastmaster. Everyone, please remain silent while the judges complete the ballots and have them collected by the ballot. 